There we see it, the tail of the tape, as they say in America. Andries and Harding. Look at the age difference. 11 years that Harding is giving Dennis Andries tonight, or vice versa. And there's the man, <laughs> Iron Mike, world heavyweight champion. <laughs> Apparently totally unconcerned by the latest round of speculation in a scurrilous newspaper. Checking the rules for you. These rules agreed on the day of the fight, Michael. Do they agree them on the day of the fight? Yes. Yes, I do. For today, Joe Cortez from New Jersey. Right, we're going to join our commentators right, at ringside now. Alex Wallow, Don Deodor. By the way, Richard Murray, Arsenio Garcia, and Ismail Kino. Round one underway. Dennis Andres in the gold trunks. Jeff Harding, the challenger from Australia, wearing the black. Dennis Andres is traditionally a slow starter, but he's... He's picked up the pace, uh, his normal pace, a little bit here, and I think that's smart. I don't think he wants this kid to get any confidence. I think he wants to try to jump right on him, drain him of confidence, and not let him into this fight. Good left, left jab by Harding, who told us ahead of time that was his plan. He wanted to hide behind that jab. He wants to stay behind it until he figures out Dennis Andre, certainly the stiffest competition Jeff Harding has ever seen. The word that used to be synonymous with Dennis Andres was awkward. I mean, he was a very crude, awkward guy, but he has, at the advanced stages of his career, in his middle or late 30s, refined himself. Uh, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Emmanuel Stewart says when Dennis Andres got to the Kronk gym in Detroit, he didn't know any tricks. <laughs> he had to teach him some. Alex wouldn't know a good word to describe Andres, be relentless. He just beats on you and beats on you. Yeah, he is prepared to do whatever's necessary to win. He'll just keep coming back at you. He has tremendous resiliency. And so does uh, Jeff Harding. I mean, to this state, uh, so far in his career against the opponents that he's faced, uh, he has shown the ability to take punishment and come back also. He is not the type of fighter, talking about Harding, who's going to score much going backwards. He's a typical Australian fighter in that respect. He's going to move forward and try to take the offensive. Dennis Andres, though, not an opponent used to going backwards. So no, neither I, man. This right. will be fought in the middle of the ring, I would suspect. Right. Good jabs by Harding, but good work to the body by Andres. Left and right combinations to the ribs. You know, it's ironic. Both these men, if you had to find a fault with them, the, the most glaring thing has been that they have good body shot there by Harding. Very, Very good. Both men have had defensive liabilities. They've been wide open and easy to hit. A good right from Andres found home, and you saw it snap the head of Harding back. And now it's Jeff Harding up against the ropes. The point I was making about defense, both men are concentrating at times on holding their hands up much higher than normal. Ooh, there's a cut on the left eye, an abrasion or a cut on the left eye of the challenger, Harding. By the amount of redness and a solid right from Andres landed on that eye, and it has opened it up. It also buckled the legs of Jeff Harding. A lot of punches from both fighters have landed. There's another left to the ear of Harding. These two fighters have taken a toll on each other already here in the first round. The bell just sounds and round two is underway. And Alex, between rounds, we can see that that cut is more to the side of Jeff Harding's eye. Right, it may bother him more mentally than physically. I don't think it's going to obscure his vision, but it's a tough thing to go in trying for your world title and get busted up in the first round. The way these two are landing punches in the first round, you have to wonder if they can do that each, to each other over the course of 12. Not a at lot that of pace. solid blows. Not, not at that pace they can. Right now, Dennis Andres is backing up much more than he did in the first round. He's giving more ground. Oh, good, good right, and then two left by Dennis Andres. That, that might have looked like a somewhat wild overhand right by Andres, but that's a, a straight right compared to what he used to do. He used to really wing his punches. He has been working hard to shorten them up. Oh, and another right, followed by right, both landing to Harding, but still, neither one of those punches rocks him backwards. What's ahead, Dennis? What's ahead inside, Dennis? I'll tell you something. Jeff Harding may not yet be a world-class fighter, but he has a world-class chin. I mean, he's taking some solid shots right on the button. He did buckle a little bit once in the first round, 
but he's still in there winging. He's he, a tough kid. And he, in turn, Alex, has landed some solid blows to the body on Andres. Neither one of these two fighters using their bicycle here today. I think they're on the rack. Yeah, no, this, is, this is a definite phone booth fight. This could be fought in an eight-foot ring. Action here in the second round from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Almost a low blow by Harding, very close. Dennis, Dennis thinks he can lose the almost. <laughs> oh, and another right finds the chin of Harding. And Dennis Andre swinging that right, the left lands, and Jeff Harding up against the rope. Work out, work out, come on, work out here. And Alex, your point I think is well made. That right looks like it's wild, but it's it's going right where it's supposed to go. Yeah, and Harding also is not just not a good enough fighter to get out of the way of it. Well, we're kinda, well, we're He's kinda, been able on, in his 14 pro fights to date to get by on toughness. He can take two punches to land his one because his one has always been stronger, but now he's in with a guy who's as strong as he is. You heard Joe Cortez, the referee, telling Harding to work off the ropes. Just don't stay there. Neither fighter getting any ground, but up to this point, it's been Jeff Harding who's been absorbing most of the heavy blows, the majority. Dan, a lot of fighters would get discouraged when they hit a man with as good, many good punches as Dennis Andres has hit Harding with and haven't had him go down, but Dennis Andres does not discourage easily. Coming to the end of the second round, Rock'em Sokka. This is action in the third round that just got started. Dennis Andres, the champion, in the gold trunks. And he has been landing some rockets to Jeff Harding's face and body. But Alex, you made the point about Harding having a world-class chin. At least to this point, it looks like he does. Well, he's got a good cut, man. That, that cut is, that was not a problem in round two. And would know it's there as round three starts. One thing we know for sure about Jeff Harding, who fights in the same stable with Jeff Fennick, the WBC featherweight champion, is that is that Johnny Lewis, the trainer, does one thing with his fighters. They are relentless and they are in shape. They could go 20 and 30 rounds. At least that's the impression they give you. He also likes to emphasize body punching. Uh, Harding just landed two solid blows, one with each hand to the body. We now see a little bit of blood from the nose of Jeff Harding. I think, did I call Fennick the uh, featherweight champ? If I did, he's the lightweight champ. I'm not sure what I said. Jeff Fennick, long side at ringside, sitting next to Mike Tyson. He was like the first time. He was he's retired now, but he was the uh, featherweight champ. Sooner or later, I'll get it. <laughs> oh, a good right. A good contingent has come up from Australia. There's a look at Fennick, right next to Mike Tyson. Yeah. Rooting... <laughs> who's that guy sitting next to Jeff Fennick? <laughs> <Yeah>, <laughs> Since he retired because of bad hands a few months ago, Jeff Fennick looks like he'd have trouble making the middleweight limit right now. He does look big. <laughs> Jeff Harding in only his 15th professional fight. And right, right in the center of the ring. He's not going anywhere. And right now, Dennis Andre seems to be loading up a little bit more. He seems to be looking for a little bit of air. I think Jeff... Excuse me, Jeff Harding would do very well to try to jump on Dennis Andres right now, not let him catch his breath. Of course, you say that, you always wonder if Harding needs the breather as well. Two good shots to the body by Andres. Yeah, you see it. And in turn, Harding counters. Good work inside by Jeff Harding. Oh, and a solid right uppercut from Andres. Back between the gloves. Neither man has any ability to slip a punch. They either try their, their defense is either to hold their hands up in front of their face. Or, that's all they have. They really just don't throw punches. The end of round three. Three rounds gone, Alan Minter back in London. How do you see it so far? Yeah, I've got um, Henry's ahead, but um, 
all with due respect, Hardy is a game fighter. You know, when I saw him before, very mediocre, but I suppose this is the big one. So he's raised, raised to the occasion, looking very strong. Michael Watson, your feelings on how it's gone so far? At the moment, in my, in my view, the fight's very even at the moment. Um, Harding is really bringing out all the stops now. You know, he's impressed me at the moment. All right, Michael, more from you and from Alan in good time. Thanks very much indeed. Let's rejoin the commentators. Alex Wallow, Don Deodorf, round four coming up. All right, Ken. Just get on out of here. Gang in your class. Okay. Right. Which round we're going to win? And your man, keep up with winning this round, okay? okay. And Alex, here in the beginning of the fourth round, as we look back at round number three, one of those rounds very difficult to score. That's one of those easily could go to either fighter. Well, Andres was so dominant, not so dominant, but dominated the first two that you kind of look for the other guy to, ooh, you look for the other guy uh, to make a move, and Harding definitely made a move in that round. May have been even, Harding might have won it uh, just barely, but it was a round in which he got a little bit back into the fight. And you can sense the concern in Andre's corner in between rounds, Emmanuel Stewart telling Dennis, Dennis, you can't back up and you have to throw more punches. You have to get his respect. Right now, Harding's been hit with a lot of heavy punches, but he has no respect yet for Dennis Andre. We mentioned Dennis Andres was living in London, but came to Detroit to work under that man, Emmanuel Stewart, the patriarch of the Kronk Gymnasium in Detroit, one of boxing's more famous table gyms. And these two are just trading some heavy-duty artillery. Very, very few jabs. Both men say they like the jab. Dennis Andres trying to develop one late in his career. There they both tried him. Oh, and a solid right from Andres. A good inside, and a good inside left with it, too, Dan. Ooh. Again, an uppercut from Andres, and then he backs out and follows it with a right. Oh, and a solid combination left and right from Andres. But Harding just takes it, doesn't move back. It keeps coming back. You have to wonder what Jeff Hardy could do for training, Alex, to prepare himself for this kind of punishment in the ring. Could, uh, hit walls with his chin, I guess. I mean, uh, he is getting wrapped with, with, with huge power punches. And every time he gets hit with those big punches from Andres, he, he doesn't back up. He oh. comes and counters on a good right, and that caught Hardy's attention. Another right from Andres scores. That hit gloves. Harding is no longer bleeding, but it is swelling a little bit. Oh, and another right to the hairline, followed by a left. And, and right about now, you'd have to think Dennis Andres is saying to himself, my God, what do I have to hit this guy with? I think he's reaching a stage where if this kid doesn't have the effect of his punch, show the effect of the punches soon, Dennis will get discouraged. It's been fast and furious. The fourth round is coming to a close here in Atlantic City. Stay with us. Four rounds gone on this world uh, WBC light heavyweight championship. Michael Watson pretty even so far, but so far, this guy Harding is walking through everything Dennis yeah, Andrews has really, done. This is really um, boiling up to be a really good fight. Um, Harding has really impressed me. You know, I mean, I've really looked at him in his previous fights, but he's really bringing it out in this, in this particular fight. Alan Winter, 35 as against 24 as it goes on. Is the age going to become more and more important? Yeah, I think so, with the way the fight's going. I mean, Harding's taking plenty on the chin. How long he can take those punches for, I don't know. But what's happening, Andrews is getting to him early. As the, the, the later part of the rounds are coming, he's, he's tending to tire, and then Harding come back into the, into the fight. But it's in, a, keep... in a word, are you worried about Andrews and the age? I'm not, no, I'm not worried because I think their determination is hope to bring him through. Okay, let's find out how round five goes. Coming now. He's throwing them right hands too. He's letting the right hands go. This is the beginning of round number five. Dennis Andres 
the champion in the gold. Jeff Harding is challenger wearing the black. There we go. And Jeff Harding to this point has shown that he can take a lot of punishment, illustrated there by that right-left combination from Andres. Emmanuel Stewart told Dennis in the corner in between rounds, keep throwing that right hand. He, he can hit him with it, and no man can take that punch for long. Jeff Harding has not only taken it, but he's also countered with good punches of his own, and there goes Harding down. Two, three, four, Jeff Harding getting up five, with a smile on his face, and Alex, a mystery blow. I didn't really see yeah. a, a big enough punch to drop him after what he's taken. Wait and see the replay, and then I didn't either. He's obviously not hurt. Only been down once before, never before as a pro, once before as an amateur. And uh, that will count as the first knockdown of his career. Rule a knockdown by referee Joe Cortez, and he really had no choice. But it was obvious to us at ringside that Harding really wasn't affected at all by whatever it was that put him to the canvas. No, I don't think he was affected because I don't think he was hit very much. It had to be the feet getting tangled up somehow or just a cuff to thrown down. Maybe his own feet got tangled. We'd like to alert our ABC stations down the line that at the conclusion of this round, we'll be taking a station break. That, that's an important event in the fight because that was a case where... Uh, now makes this a two-point round, even though he wasn't hurt, even though there was no apparent punch. Still a two-point round. Well, that's normally the way you can count on a judge to score, that when there's a knockdown, he adds, he takes away the extra point. Of course, you can't imagine that these guys could go to a decision anyway, the way they're fighting. But they are both very, very well conditioned, as we said at the top. Jeff Harding content to hammer away at the ribs and work inside with the close, compact punches. Neither one of these two has any intention of moving back. And you and I were talking earlier, Alex, about the Australian fighters. I said that I thought Harding had a facial resemblance to Jeff Fennick. He has a fighting resemblance to Fennick as well. You know, he has the same intensity, the same determination, the same grit. ABC's Wide World of Sports will continue after this word from our ABC station. While our American colleagues go out to take a glass of water or whatever they take stateside in between rounds, Alan Minter probably will be able to tell us. Let's take a check on what was perhaps the most controversial incident of the whole fight so far. I remember we're in round five. Now, this is Andres, of course, in yellow on the right-hand side. We're going to see Harding go over. Michael Watson, talk us through that. Um, I, don't, I don't think it was a punch. Um, I think Dennis dragged him down with his left hand. Yeah, that was a definite drag down. You'll see him in just a second, Michael. Well, we didn't quite see it, but he turned as if to say, shook his head, said, no way was that a punch. Alan Minter, quickly, just give us a quick comment. Alan, yeah. will the judges disregard that? Hopefully they, hopefully they will, yes. Um, it was definitely a push, a push over. The guy got up and was very embarrassed by going on the floor. So I think they should sort of uh, scrub the two-point decision. All right, we'll know soon enough. Round six coming now. And we're underway in round number six from the Atlantic City Convention Center. Jeff Harding and Dennis Andres in a match to this point that they've dished out some punishment. You have to wonder whether they can go 12. That's what we're scheduled for here today. And again, we're here in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Dennis Andre is the champion in the gold. Jeff Harding in the black. We're underway in round six. Two minutes and 20 seconds remaining here in the sixth round. Dan, I know you're supposed to give a 10-8 round whenever there's a knockdown. I scored that last round 10-9 for Dennis Andre. I just didn't give him the 10-8. The punch, we looked at it on replay in between rounds. It was just a cup, and Jeff Harding's knee, uh, I'm sorry, uh, feet got uh, caught. It just went down really off balance. It was obvious that Harding was fine as he popped right up, and 
in between rounds, we looked in on the corner of Jeff Harding, and here he is sitting there after five rounds, fighting the type of fight that he fought. He wasn't even breathing through his mouth. A remarkably conditioned athlete. I'd have to say the same for Dennis Andres as well. The ability to take a punch comes from conditioning. You have to have a God-given chin. But at the end of the day, the ability to come back, the ability to have resilience, I mean, these guys have put in tremendous amounts of time getting themselves ready for this fight. Watch that elbow, guess, watch that elbow. Paraphrasing that would be what Vince Lombardi said. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. Right. No cowards today. Watch that elbow, Dennis. Watch that elbow. First time Jeff Harding is laid on the ropes. His corner yelling, get off the ropes. Come on, work out of there. Come on, you can see he doesn't have the skill to turn his man, but he does have the strength to try to fight his way off. And he did so pretty effectively there. That big overhand right from Andre planted on the glove of Harding. Jeff is, is still throwing punches and still landing punches. He looks a little bit slower right now. Neither one of these two the least bit hesitant to work the body when they're inside close. The other thing when you're in condition is you wait for second wins and third wins. They're the shoulder of Jeff Hardy. Yeah, and Joe Cortez gives him the warning. That's a good job by Cortez. It was obvious that Hardy cleared Andres off with a forearm. Good job there by Joe Cortez. As Dennis Andres started to hold the head of Jeff Hardy, he was working to the midsection of Dennis Andres, and Cortez let him continue to work. Sixth round is winding down. This fight scheduled for 12. If it makes it, we're halfway there. All right, time. At the halfway point, Dennis Andrews perhaps slightly ahead on points. We have it back here. Alan Minter, do you agree with that? Yeah, I think he's just slightly ahead. But um, what amazes me with Harding being that much taller, he's coming, he's coming very close to Andrews and throwing some tremendous body shots. But to the public who are watching it, they don't look like they're devastating punches, but they're hurting him. And for a man of that age, it must be weakening him. Harding certainly uh, surprised us, hasn't he? Absolutely. He's, he's doing very well. Very well indeed. All right, Alan. Thanks very much indeed. Let's take the opportunity perhaps to go back to the corner there. That's Harding's corner. Let's hear what they're saying. Let's go now. I, 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 I wasn't pushing the water, 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 but now we got to pick it up a little bit now. Okay, got to pick it up now. All right, that's the sign. Okay, we got to pick it up some now. Okay. Why, man? Because now we're going into the last half of the fight now, and I got you losing the fight. You're losing the championship. You're losing the title. You can't think about it when you get home. Throw the right hands lower. You're throwing them too damn high. Bring them down some. In the seventh round, we're started here in Atlantic City, and Alex, pretty funny words by Emmanuel Stewart in between rounds. Well, he told Dennis Andres, the champion, that you're losing the fight. Now, I question Emmanuel's sincerity in saying that. I think that's motivational. He also said, you got to pick up the pace. <laughs> and Dennis looked at him like, please, God. Emmanuel Stewart proving to be a tough man to please, telling his fighter to pick up the pace, and you're losing. The only round I've seen that Harding might have won would have been the third. Oh, good work inside by Jeff Harding. Oh, and again, the right gets over the top and lands by Andre. With all the punches they're throwing, their heads are also very close, doing some punishment, uh, causing some punishment uh, from time to time. Again, a reminder to everyone about our light heavyweight bout we've got coming your way tomorrow from this same ring. It's going to be Prince Charles Williams and Bobby Chez on our Split Small Liquor Professional Boxing Series. That'll be a rematch of their October 87 fight, 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central. You know, tomorrow yeah, afternoon. Dan, Dan, we didn't know what this fight would turn out to be because Harding was so unknown. We knew tomorrow's fight would be good because of the styles and the motivation of Chez and Williams in their rematch, but this fight we really weren't sure about. But Harding really has been... It's good or better than we could have ever dreamed. Working the uppercuts is Harding, and then the left counter gets in and lands on the ear, but neither one of these two fighters seems to have an impact on the other guy. And Alex, my ears can't be deceiving me. Those are solid blows. Yeah, sometimes you can land a lot of punches and wonder why the other guy doesn't go, and it's because the guy landing the punches doesn't have power. Both these men have proven power. Again, Jeff Harding on the ropes and showing an inability to get off. 
That's more or less a case of Andre just letting him off. That left eye on Harding is open again, and it may be open a little bit more on top this time. You've got to go back and reference what we were talking about earlier about Dennis Andres being 35 years old and potentially being even older than that, Alex, to keep up this kind of pace for a 12-round fight. Truly remarkable for a man of that age. There are people in England who say Dennis Andres is 40 years old. I mean, he just really is an amazing specimen. He's very dedicated and very, very determined. Draw a hot bath for these two. If this goes much longer, they've got to be hurting. you around. This is the champions, man, coming up. You mean the champion? How do you feel, Phil? I feel like a champ, Josh. All right, mate. You won't feel like a champion if you get here. Understand? Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, Josh. Okay, mate. Every time it's in place, we're on the line. How are you doing, Ed? How are you doing, Ed? championship between Dennis Andres and Jeff Hardy. I'm Dan Deardorff along with Alex Wallow and this has been a fight Alex not much on finesse but a whole lot of toughness and a whole lot of great shots landed by both fighters. If both fighters have stood up to the shots the other man has landed I mean it's really been remarkable especially Jeff Hardy. It's hard to believe that this fight with all the punches that have been landed that this fight could go to a decision. Especially the body punches have been landed, like the ones that Hardy just landed on Andre. You think they'd have a toll here in the later rounds that one of these guys, oh, you see Andre's there, touching his left eye like he thought he might have gotten cut. If it wasn't for the physical signs that this fight has gone this long in terms of the redness around the face of Harding and his cut eye, to look at these two fighters and the way they're moving and the way they're breathing, breathing you'd think this was four or five rounds ago. This is as much action as you will ever see with two guys of this size. Light heavyweights. If you joined us late, the pace you are seeing here in round number eight has not changed from the opening bell. This is actually a little bit low. There. Andres goes back on the ropes on purpose, stunned by a Harding shot. Andre's trying to load up with a wild right that was easily blocked. And his combination gets between the gloves of Hardy. And this is Jeff Hardy's opportunity in this fight. Dennis Andre's is not real hurt. He's still dangerous, but he needs a rest. And psychologically, Dennis Andre's has to be saying to himself, I don't think I can take this guy out. I don't know if I can hit him hard enough to take him out. He may not stay that way, but for the first time in the fight, Dennis Andres actually looks discouraged. What a good left-right combination from Harding, both on the chin of Dennis Andres. I think Harding can feel it. He's trying to turn it up a notch. Oh, work at it. Work at it. Work at it. Right from Dennis Andres that took him off balance. One of the signs that fatigue is beginning to set in. Are we reaching the point where the younger fighter has an advantage? I don't know. Four rounds scheduled. This bout's supposed to be 12. Round eight comes to a close. 
Eight rounds gone back here in London. Michael Watson, are you starting to see the tide turn against your friend Dennis Andrews? I think the longer the fight goes, the better it should work for Dennis. You know, the longer the fight goes, it should work in his favour. But Dennis does take time, time to warm up. You're not worried he's starting to look a bit tired? Well, that was a good round. They gave it the raw in that round, and obviously that would take a lot out of both fighters. I mean, they, they've been giving it very good shots. Both chins have been tested to the fore. Harding looks quickly to have stepped up a gear, though, in that round. He's really coming on very well, you know, and um, I'm totally impressed by the performance he's given tonight. All right, Michael. More from you in just a minute or two. Thanks very much indeed. We'll go back to ringside in just a minute or two. Alan Minter, quick word from you. No, we won't, we'll leave it, Alan. Sorry, let's go back to ringside. More from Alan Minter after the next round. Just underway in the ninth round. The eighth round being Jeff Harding's best round to date, wouldn't you say, Alex? Yeah, absolutely. Let's see if we can sustain the action of whether Dennis Andres gets his second, third, fourth win wherever he is. Oh, man. That uppercut is such a dangerous punch. He's landed him a number of times, tries it again. Because that can really bust up a man's nose and give him a lot of trouble breathing. Harding has not seemingly been affected by him. Both of these fighters bleeding from the mouth. Doesn't appear to be serious for either one of the two. But when you look at the two fighters between rounds, Jeff Harding clearly appears to be the better in shape. Good body punch there by Harding. There's a baseball card show taking place here in Atlantic City, and how's that? There's the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio, sitting next to the splendid splitter, Ted Williams, two of baseball's greatest players taking in the fight here today in Atlantic City. Maury Wills also here. Joe DiMaggio, though, is a real good fight fan. He's the kind of guy that'd show up a fight whether he's doing a baseball card signing or not. Well, I bet both of those guys are saying spring training was never this tough. <laughs> Hitting the little white ball doesn't seem so hard compared to what these two are doing here today. Each of these fighters would like to have a baseball bat in their hands right now. I don't know if they could hurt each other. Oh, a good combination from Harding. The crowd sensing a momentum shift. And Jeff Fennick, Harding's Australian teammate and friend over in the front row on the other side of the ring, about to hyperventilate. not a lot to analyze here, uh, Dan. I mean, uh, you hit me, I'll hit you, and who's in the best condition, and who can take the punch the best, and who can throw the most punches? That blow from Andres hits a glove of Harding. He'll be confused by the sound. We are in the ninth round of this championship fight. A good left by Andres. You pointed out about Harding, but you know, neither of these men is really sucking for air. They both just... It's unbelievable. Again, Harding on the ropes and not showing the ability to get out. And again, it's Andre who more or less lets him off, although Harding comes out with a pretty strong left. Jeff Harding is a little bit too upright there. He's throwing punches, but he needs to bend like that, like he did with the body punch to get the leverage. He can't stand straight up. Seconds of the ninth round. What more can you ask for? Because we can't get tired. You know that's what he has a problem. No Come time on, to son. get tired. Tiredness is nothing. He's the one that's tired. He's the one that's starting to run on empty, son, as we said. But Jeff, he can only tire us down if he hits us. Understand? Mate, you've got to stay in place all the time. We're working six to one. Nice ball. Come on, Jeff. Put right. anything. That's the shot. Get on the shoulder. Play tight, shoulder. but don't be backing up. You've got to keep him pushing now. See? Roll, get a little roll. Check how you roll underneath. Come up with the left hook. It's always bring, bring it home. It. Bring the left hook back every time. Bring it home. Bring it on home. Put some on it. Come on, okay. Jump up. Jump up. Jump up. Jump up. Jump up. In the 
the 10th round. These two pick up where they left off, right in the middle of the ring and wailing away. And Alex, I know announcers often are guilty of overhyping their event, but what do you say about a fight like this? <laughs> yeah, I'm in a little bit of trouble right now because I never thought this fight was going to distance. So I gotta figure out the scoring. Starting, I have one of the last two rounds. He's climbed back into it. I think he'd have to at least win two out of these last three. That's but the way my scorecard reads as well, that he would have to win two of the three to have a shot at it. Because it was Dennis Andres through the first six rounds with maybe Harding stealing the third. But it has been Jeff Harding and his ability to take everything that Dennis Andres has thrown his way. And we're not talking about fluff either. We're talking about heavy duty, heavy duty barrage. A good example there. Two good lefts from Andres. Now by the same token, Harding has hit Andres with a lot. A good example, that left to the body, but Andres doesn't appear to be worse than He Martin. came right back with a brutal right hand to the head. That slid over the left eye of Harding is just starting to open again. Dennis Andre is shaking his head as he backed out of that last exchange. Has to be a frustrated fighter. All of a sudden, uh, Jeff Harding is starting to show the effects of this. Bleeding from the nose, bleeding from the mouth, bleeding from the left eye, but still coming forward. Still trying to become the first light heavyweight, the Australian light heavyweight, to win a world championship. Well, he's got the heart of a big time fighter. Now you have to wonder if he's fighting a fighter who wants to show a lot of movement, what kind of fighter Harding would be. He's certainly not had any of that today by either one of these two. No, I think you're exactly right. He might have trouble with a clever boxer. But there aren't going to be too many men who stand there and make themselves available outside of Dennis Andres who are going to be able to stand up to them. He's a tough kid. That may be the stupidest thing I've ever said. <laughs> what, scares, tough kid. what scares me is it made sense to me. <laughs> yeah. You don't know he's a tough kid by now. You haven't watched him. This is the end of the 10th round. We'll be back. Stay with us, won't you? All right, done. 10 rounds done and two to go. Alan Minter back in London. Let's take a look at your scorecard. How do you think it's going? Well, there's nothing in it. There's two rounds. We have to two rounds to go. Um, anybody's fight. Um, all, but due respect to both fighters, they're in tremendous shape. Um, I would never believe this fight could go the way it's gone. You know, looking at the records of the both both men, you know, I honestly believe that um, Andrews would be a one-horse race. But um, Harding, very, very durable, great body shots, and still winning the fight. Michael Watson, quickly, how does it look on your scorecard? A oh, cool fight. Um, I'll give Dennis the edge so far. You know, he's getting stronger as the fight goes on. Um, he's looking up to be a very good fight. OK, thanks very much indeed, gentlemen. Two rounds to go. Let's rejoin them at the Trump Plaza in Atlantic City. Breathe. Oh, Deep breath. Don't blow your nose right, mate. Come on, take it easy. That's the bell that begins the 11th round for the WBC World Light Heavyweight Championship here at the Convention Center in Atlantic City. Dennis Andres wearing the gold, Jeff Harding the challenger wearing the black. And these two have wailed away on each other for 10 rounds. I'm Dan Yerdorf along with Alex Wallow and some punishment has been dished out, chewed, digested, and neither one of these guys showing much in the way of an effect. Well, Harding bleeding from the nose now. But again, it's difficult to tell whether it's more along the line of abrasions or really something internal. If somebody bleeds from the nose like Harding is bleeding, you wonder whether he has broken that nose.
Even as I say, neither one of them showing much for worse for wear. Harding is now beginning to bleed pretty profusely from that nose. Again, the good Harding body punch. A lot Harding. of fighters are afraid to get in close like that, aren't they, Alex, and work the body? Certainly leaves you exposed to the uppercut. Especially when you're as busted up as, that, as uh, Jeff Harding is, and when the guy uses his head like that. Oh, oh and another right. The left was blocked, but the right really rocked Harding. And what does he do? He counters and knocks Andres back to the rope. Arm punching right now. Jeff Harding should dig down and rip some punches. Out. Not arm punch. Oh, look at that. And the blood really starting to come out of the nose of Jeff Harding. And now it's Dennis Andres, but Harding fights his way off the ropes. Oh, look at that. Come on, get the down top. Come on. Get the down top there. Come on. Look at that. Look at the, the Andres head. Andres leading on Harding, attempting to keep him and keep him on a rope. To nifty little sidestep by Jeff Harding. That's the first time he's made a move on a rope. Tremendous body punching by Jeff Harding. And it shows on Dennis Andres, who's covering up. A little bit of a wobble in Dennis Andres right there for those four body punches. And that right sends Andres back. And for the first time, Dennis Andres giving the appearance of a man in trouble. If Hardy could dig down and, and throw and land a series of power punches, Joe Cortez might stop it. 15 seconds left in the 11th round. Dennis Andres ought to throw a punch. Joe Cortez looking closely. Inside five seconds here in the 11th. That's it. There's a bell. One more round. And look at the spring and the step of Jeff Hardy at the end of the 11th. After the body punches the gun, Andre's in trouble. He went back to the ropes. Harding putting together a series of punches. Could not get over the one or two punches in combination that would force the referee to stop it. Relax, relax. Come on. Jeffrey, Hard. A lot of blood from Jeff Harding, but again, he's not breathing deeply. Right hand, left hook. Everything you got on the toe. Keep your back in the last one. Great championship bounce here. These are two of the most finely conditioned fighters I have ever seen, Alex. You know, we said at the top of the show. Oh, and again, Andres is rocked early by a left from Harding. Boy, this, this round not even 10 seconds old, and Andres against the rope. Dennis Andres will not give up his title without a fight. Dennis Andres' legs appear to be very stiff. He doesn't seem to have a lot underneath him. If Jeff Hardy could put together a series... Oh! Oh, and there it is! The combination of Andres is down. Let's take a look at the first knock. 
touchdown. Here is Jeff Hardy. Two lefts, and the combination sends him to the ground. That is Andres. It just appeared he just gave everything he had. He wasn't unconscious when he went down. He just had nothing more to give. On my scorecard, Jeff Hardy needed a knockout to win, and he got it. Dennis Andres rose for the third time, but Joe Cortez wisely steps in, stops it, and Jeff Hardy, the WBC light heavyweight champion of the world, will return here to Atlantic City for an interview. We'll be back in just a minute.